It is September now, which means that it's springtime in the Southern Hemisphere and my content focus is shifting towards propagation. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you the fastest method of propagating. Stay tuned. So the fastest propagation technique is called the money method. Seriously though, it is the 2nd of September, which means that it is Father's Day down here in Australia. So I'm giving myself a treat. I'm here at Ascot Vale Garden Center, no doubt one of my favorite places and you'll clearly see why. So I brought home quite a few plants. There's 13 here, but there's actually more. This is not all of them. I actually got some plants earlier this week. So these are just the ones that I bought today. Let me go grab the rest of them. I guess I went a bit overboard there. <laughs> now kidding aside, I was being a bit tongue-in-cheek with calling this the money propagation method. It's true though that it's the fastest way to get a lot of plants. Two of the main reasons why I buy new plants is that one, I don't have them yet, so they are going to add into my collection. And the second reason is I want to propagate them either to sell or for adding on into my landscapes because I've got lots of space to cover. It's been a while since I last did a succulent tour. So rather than showing you the entire garden, I'm just going to show you these plants. Most of these plants, especially those in the purple pots, these ones are not in my collection yet. They are new to me. This one is new as well. So is this and this too. The small ones you see right here are excess that I want to propagate. And they were selling really cheap so I figured, why not? Once they grow a bit under my care, I'll be letting go of most of them. Let's talk about the new plants. Now this first one, I got this labeled as Echeveria New Miranda. I guess that is a reference to, a, to another hybrid named Miranda. Since it says New Miranda, then maybe this has the same parents or it comes from the same, from the same hybrid. I don't have a Miranda specimen, so I can't compare the two. So for now, I'll just go with this name for the lack of a better name. Maybe it isn't official. It's a, it's, it sounds like this is just a nickname. This next one is a Graptoviria. This, uh, this is a Graptoviria Royal Flush. The leaves are rather chunky and it gets that from its parent, the Graptopetalum amethorum. 
Actually, its parents are the Graptopetalum amethorum and Echeveria affinis, which you would know as Black Knight. So, the, the affinis lends to the leaf shape, while the chunkiness is from the amethorum. This is an Echeveria bicolor, and right now, it looks quite leggy, so it's due a head chop. I'll be doing that soon. This is another cultivar that's new to me. Its name is Echeveria ivoni or Ivonii. Definitely sounds like a hybrid name. It doesn't. The name isn't Latin. It sort of looks like a Graptoveria to me, but time will tell. I'll have to wait for the flowers to form. In any case, I'll go with that name for now. This next one is an Echeveria Green Smile. And from the name, this sort of names, it sounds like this is a Korean hybrid. Not that I'm calling stereotypes, but it seems that that kind of name sounds like something that they would do, you know? It has lots of spots right now. This is obviously signs of frost damage because you were hit by frost and some hail very recently. So I guess it sustained the damage. But apart from that, it's looking really healthy. So I'm taking it. Well, it's already here. Too late. This is an Echeveria Joyce Giant. At first, I thought this was a... Uh, what's the name of the other plant? When I first saw this, I thought this was an um, Echeveria Richard, but apparently it's, it is not. And like I said in my previous comparison video, I would have to wait for this to grow even more mature because a lot of plants look very similar, especially those with the same or a common parent. They look a lot similar when they are young. It may not look like it because it appears large, but this is actually still just a tiny plant. Pop. I guess I'll have to wait until the end of summer for this to grow. That way I'll have a better idea what this is. Maybe it might even flower by then. This next one, I found this labeled as Echeveria Japanese Purple. And from the name, it's obviously a Japanese hybrid. So I'm looking forward to see how it would look like once it grows. This next one here is an Echeveria albicans. This is often confused with elegance, but this is a bit different. Uh, I find that the leaves of the albicans is more chiseled, more angular, and thicker than the elegance. So once this grows a bit, I'm going to create a comparison video with this and the elegance. Echeveria mystery. <laughs> By the looks of it, a few plants come into mind immediately. The first would be Polydonis and the other would be Orion and if I would go for a third the third would be Hercules So it looks like it looks to me like this is a hybrid based on Polydonis It's starting to grow a flower stalk here. So once that grows once that flower stalk grows out It would give me a better idea the parentage or the species that it was made from if I would have to bet on it I would say this is a Polydonis hybrid. I'm just not sure with which this next one here is an Echeveria sagita. As you can see from the flowers, this yellow flowers in a... I forgot the term, was it racim? No, it forms two branches. So it's not just a single direction. Anyway, about the flowers. The yellow flowers tell me that there's a polydonis mixed in here somewhere. And the red on the tips of the leaves is another clue to that. That's definitely a polydonis characteristic but the shape of the leaves look like an agavoides as far as i know the sagitta is a hybrid between the polydonis and one of the agavoides types i'm just not sure which agavoides form was used so i don't know we'll see this next one here is an echeveria pioneer again it looks to me like this is another agavoides hybrid at least one of the parents is an agavoides because the leaf, the leaf shape reminds me of Echeveria Martin. I think I have another Agavoides here, which looks almost like this, only a bit more solid looking. I don't know. And its name, I think, was Mountain Range. Huh. They probably came from the same parents. Now, this is a clump of Echeveria Juniper. I'm lucky to find this pot with one, two, three, four, five, five heads. So I'll definitely be propagating and growing the rest of them, maybe even sell them, I guess. 
my first time seeing a juniper so I'm not sure what the parentage is so I guess I'll just let them grow this next one is an Echeveria Sunset Ridge this looks like yet another one of those Polydonis hybrids based on the leaf shape and on the, the markings it looks like it's favoring the Polydonis side it has some a couple of flower stalks coming out so once it grows if it turns out to be yellow like the Sagita then it's definitely a Polydonis based hybrid this is a curious one the label that comes with it says Echeveria Blade Runner based on the shape of the leaves it's upturned it reminds me of the topsy-turvy from the Ragnonii and if you look closely at the leaves there does seem to be a re resemblance to the Ragnonii so maybe it's one of those newer hybrids because they because there seems to be a lot of Ragnonii or more of the topsy-turvy hybrids coming out this next one I'm pretty sure is a curls I got it because it was selling cheap and it has lots of pups well at least three pups so why not this next one here is labeled as an Echeveria Lady Grey cross I'm not sure what the Lady Grey is by looking at the leaves it seems like there might be a Pactifitum influence here but I'll be able to confirm once the flowers come out I'm very doubtful of the ID this is the ID that came with the label, but let's work with what we have so far. This next one here is a Linceana. This is a more mature version, and I recently featured this in my comparison video about the Colorata and Chihuahuaenses. So, when I saw this, I knew I had to buy this because I needed to show a mature version. Because the one that I have in the garden right now is tiny and it has been ravaged by insects, so doesn't really show the form, the correct form. So here we go. This is an Echeveria barbellion. I have another more mature plant out in the garden but I just like getting another one because the carunculated Echeverias are doing really great in my garden so why not. The remaining plants are so tiny they're still pups so I'll give you another vantage point. Okay now we're looking at the smaller plants. So let's start from this corner. This is an Echeveria chihuahuaensis and this is what I also used in my previous comparison video. Now these two, these are Echeveria melaco. They're a bit red right now due to the weather but as it gets warmer, they would start shifting towards green. This one I think is an Echeveria orion. It's too early to tell, it's still too young. And I got it because it has two tiny pups coming out. So I got three plants for the price of one. Ha! Huh, lucky. These are likely Echeveria lilacina. Although there's a little chance that it might be Pollux or something else. I'll have to wait for them to grow and see what their rosette shape would look like. That way I could compare it against the existing plants that I have. This one is definitely a lilacina. This two might be a hybrid. It might be something else. But this is just a guess. I'll know for sure when they grow. This one here is an Echeveria Pearlbo Nunberg. It has been grown in the shade, which explains why there's not much color yet. Let me just swap over these two, because these two plants are the same plant. I'm just not sure what they are right now. Like with the others, once they grow, I would have a better idea. This looks to me like a Graptoveria or a Sedeveria of some sort. I'm just not sure what it is yet. It might even be a Pachyveria, I don't know. When it grows, I'll have a better idea. Now over on the left side, these two brown ones here are Kalanchoe tomentosa. This is the brown version which many people here call as chocolate sol soldier. I don't think that's the official name for it, but let's just go with that for now. This one here looks to be some sort of Echeveria polydonis. It's still too young, so it's early to tell. But given that there's lots and lots of hybrids based on polydonis, it's hard for me to tell them apart anymore. And finally, this is an Echeveria pulvinata frosty, the white version. I've got a few out there already, but I just want to create larger clumps of them. So I'm going to plant them together at some point. The 
there were lots of other plans that I wanted to get at Ascot Vale, but I was trying to control my spending. I only limited myself to about a hundred dollars, and I should limit my spending even more because the Cactus and Succulent Society event is coming up in October, October 27. So that gives me just a bit over a month to prepare. That's about two or three more paydays. <laughs> so that's it for my plant haul. I haven't done a plant haul nor a garden tour video for quite a while now because so I've been busy focusing on my planter. So now at least you saw the plants that I'm hoarding again. So as you can see, even someone like me who already has a sizable collection, I still can't resist getting new plants. I guess this is the curse of being a collector. I haven't changed into my garden gear this whole time because it was raining earlier, it was still showering when I started this video. So I think I'll just be doing a bit of gardening off camera later on. This video was mainly about showing you the plants that I've been accumulating over the past week because I started buying new plants again. Now the reason I tell myself why I got these plants is because most of them are mature and they have pups growing underneath and we just entered spring which means that these ones would grow really fast. So in a few weeks or even months I would have more plants, more excess plants to sell to further fund this addiction. In the next few episodes I'll be focusing more on harvesting the pups of some of my other echeverias. In the past I've been mostly just doing my imbricata because there's lots of the imbricata but, but it's almost time for the other plants to be harvested because the pups are large enough now. I'm planning to move the pups into their own pots that way by the time we get to the warmer part of spring they would have already grown their own roots and they would be growing independently. I still have the space in the propagation planter for that so that would be my next goal. I'd like to thank my Patreon sponsors at Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Kamina Arbaez, Linda Leal, Twin Ott, new Patreon supporter, thanks, and everyone else who have pledged on Patreon, your support is much appreciated. If you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you forgive me for the clickbait title, it's just me poking fun at myself for my series of propagation videos. But please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell because the next episodes would be about propagation. Proper propagation, not buying propagation. Let's Plan comes out every Tuesday morning my time. That would be Monday evening, Eastern time, the other side of the world. And I do a recap every Saturday evening my time. That would be Saturday morning, Eastern time. You could also check out my series Capedia series. Link is in the top right. What's funny? <laughs> What's funny? Going down. And finally, you can check out my Instagram. That's at SeriesCapades. And I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Wow, it's going down. And down.